you. <laughs> the final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 1639 in the name of Liam MacArthur on Ireland Health Boards. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put. So would those members who wish to participate please press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Liam MacArthur to open the debate. Around seven minutes, please, Mr MacArthur. Thank you uh, very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. And let me start by thanking uh, colleagues for the cross-party support that's allowed uh, this debate on island health boards to take place. I look forward to hearing uh, the contributions of those able to participate this afternoon, including, of course, uh, the Minister. Although, passing, I was slightly surprised that no SNP MSP felt able to support my motion which I don't believe really says anything unduly controversial. Indeed, in her recent response to me and my colleague Tavish Scott, the Health Secretary very reasonably, I thought, accepted many of the same points. He acknowledged the, quote, unique nature of the islands, that NHS Orkney and NHS Shetland are very distinct communities, and that the respective NHS services are experienced in the demands of serving those populations. So as I attempt to uh, set out why I believe our island health boards deserve protection, I'm encouraged by what appears to be a decent amount of common ground between myself uh, and the Health Secretary. Nevertheless, the First Minister's intention set out in her programme for government to examine the number and structure of health boards has set alarm bells ringing in Orkney and Shetland. From my conversations with those directly employed in delivering health and care services in Orkney, as well as the many members of the public who've been in touch with me over recent days, there can be no doubting the strength of feeling or the determination to resist any dilution of local control. Some of those concerns I know will not be confined to the island communities that Tavish Scott and I represent. That is because all the evidence shows large-scale structural changes inevitably distract attention away from the day-to-day -day business of delivering services. They can affect morale and the ability of organisations to recruit and retain staff, and the savings often used to justify them uh, invariably prove elusive, if not illusory. Anyone doubting this need only look at what has happened since the government decided to create a single centralised police force. Five years on, and surely only Kenny McCaskill believes this has been a success or delivered what was promised. A review of how health boards are performing, of course, is prudent. Given the crises we're seeing in many areas of health and care provision, a review is perhaps even overdue. But I would caution against believing structural reform is an answer to the maiden's prayer. Certainly for rural and island areas, such reviews tend to signal a retrenchment of services and decision-making into the centre. And this matters, not least to those who rely on these key services. At NHS uh, Orkney's AGM earlier this week, the local, local patient group voiced its opposition to NHS Orkney being subsumed within a larger board serving a wider geographic area. Preserving NHS Orkney's identity is important. That identity shapes the ethos, priorities and approach. Little wonder then there is such anxiety in the islands at what might be lost in any move to centralise services and decision making. Bringing together different boards with different identities, even priorities, offers no guarantee or indeed much likelihood that island needs would be effectively heard, understood, far less met. Moreover, it would remove the ability to be nimble in responding to local needs, to develop in conjunction with communities themselves services that best suit the island circumstances and to enhance the skills of staff in ways that ensure both quality and breadth of provision. This is not an isolationist approach. Island health boards already work collaboratively with counterparts on the mainland. NHS Grampian is the obvious example with respect to the Northern Isles, but there may be opportunities in future to work with others in providing specialist treatment that it would be impractical to, to deliver in an island setting. Here again, though, a note of caution. If the government plans to merge mainland health boards, it must take account of the impact on all patients. For example, recent uh, problems affecting the oncology department in Aberdeen saw some Orkney and Shetland cancer patients offer treatment in Dundee and Glasgow. And while the treatment itself may have been exceptionally good, out with Aberdeen, Isles patients face more complex travel arrangements and limited access to the support structure provided by Clan and the Red Cross in the Northeast. But far from reducing the services available in the islands, I want to see these increased. This ambition is shared by NHS Orkney, staff, patients and local communities themselves who see this as crucial in their efforts to attract, retain and effectively serve their populations. 
The recent decision to lo locate the CT scanner in Orkney is a case in point. Speaking to the staff involved, I know the scanner has already made a big difference in terms of early diagnosis, allowing more effective treatment, improving and in some cases saving lives, justifying the long, hard-fought campaign. And more is possible. Telehealth opens up opportunities to increase the availability of treatment in Orkney, reducing the need for patients to travel south or even to travel within Orkney. For those living in the smaller isles, for example, the option of a consultation in their local surgery supported by their GP or their nurse may appeal a great deal more than getting on a boat or a plane and travelling into Kirkwall, particularly during the winter months. Such an approach can therefore help improve patient care, reduce travel and accommodation costs, uh, unlock economies of sale, scale and open up more interesting career paths for those working in health and care in our islands. And this last point is important given the challenges faced in recruiting and retaining staff in remote and rural settings. The Royal College of uh, Surgeons again shone a light on this issue last week in their report. While there are no easy solutions, we need to do more to give those in training a taste of what island working has to offer. We need to develop a workforce comfortable across a range of general skills rather than training ever more specialists. And we must ensure more IELTS students can access Scottish medical schools. Widening access needs to be about rurality, not just about poverty. At the same time, there is no escaping the fact that financial incentives will play a part uh, in this equation as well. Deputy Presiding Officer, delivering good quality health and care in our islands to a population living longer but with more complex conditions presents enormous challenges. Meeting those challenges is beyond the, the, the gift of simply any health minister. Decent transport links, for example, including reliable air services, and I note uh, the transport minister uh, by, uh, by Maureen Watt's side, which is helpful. The availability of good mobile and broadband coverage, routinely and compellingly raised by GPs and nurses throughout my constituency. These and other factors fundamentally affect the way in which health and care is delivered in Orkney. In turn, the way in which health and care is delivered in Orkney has a fundamental bearing on the economic well-being and sustainability of the islands I represent. So my plea to the Health Minister today is to ensure that this review, and it would be helpful to hear a little more about the time frame and the process involved, protects island health boards recognising their unique status and the risks inherent in submerging them within larger, less responsive or less accountable setups. Failure to do this would drive a coach and horses through the government's commitment to island proofing. More importantly, it would undermine the ability of health and care provision to be tailored to the specific needs of our island communities. That cannot, that must not be allowed to happen. Thank you very much indeed. I now move to the open debate. Uh, speech of four minutes, please. First of all, Donald Cameron, to be followed by Marie Todd. Deputy Presiding Officer, I'd like to thank uh, Liam MacArthur for bringing this motion to the Chamber today and commend him for his efforts in highlighting concerns about health services within, not just within his own Orkney constituency, but also acting as a champion for, for the islands. I have signed this motion and I support the principles it sets out. As an MSP for the Highlands and Islands, I too share the concerns raised by Liam MacArthur about the SNP's manifesto commitment to review, and I quote, the number, structure and regulation of health boards. And in particular, I am concerned about how it might affect the health boards that affect my region. The needs of people in rural and remote areas of Scotland are, of course, vastly different to those of people living in more densely populated areas and, as such, require a very different approach to the provision of healthcare services. This is the case even more so in island constituencies such as Orkney and Shetland, but also in the Western Isles and in the many smaller islands within Argyll and Butte, for instance. I spoke on this very matter at a recent meeting here in Parliament hosted by Kate Forbes, MSP, with the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh, who have launched their report, referred to by Leah MacArthur, on the delivery of care in rural surgery. They note this clear difference between the provision of healthcare services between urban and rural Scotland. And the president of the Royal College, in his introduction, makes a particular point when he says that, and I quote, one size does not fit all when it comes to services delivery in these challenging environments, and that the needs and provision will vary depending upon the speciality and the region. And this statement is particularly poignant in the context of this discussion, because time and again, when it comes to the organization of our public services, we have seen an increasing drive to centralize services by this government. We've seen it with our fire services, 
following amalgamation. We have seen it with our police, with the creation of a single force, and we all know of the many problems that have been reported in that. And we are even now seeing it in education, with proposals announced a few weeks ago by John Swinney to create regional education boards, taking powers away from local councils and centralizing them to a larger body. So recent history serves as a powerful reminder of the dangers of over-hasty, top-down centralization. And at a time when health boards are still adjusting to the huge reorganization caused by the recent integration of health and social care, there are many valid concerns about committing to further reorganization unless it can be clearly shown to be in the best interests of patients. So on this side of the chamber, we are very skeptical indeed about the creation, if it comes, of super health boards run on a regional basis, if that turns out to be the case. I say if, because all of us here are somewhat shooting in the dark, since we don't know what the proposals are. It may be that there are some elements which we can support, and we will, of course, hold off from expressing a concluded view until something concrete has been put on the table. And like Liam MacArthur, I acknowledge that there is, of course, already joint working and collaboration across different health boards. But it is vital that we know these, what these proposals are as soon as possible, not simply for us as elected representatives to be made aware, but more importantly, so that the public, the patients, can have their say on the matter and be consulted in a meaningful way. So today, presiding officer, Deputy Presiding Officer, let me finish with a question to the Minister and repeat a call that I made in early July for clarity on these proposals. Will she give clear details today of the Scottish Government's plans for the organisational structure of NHS boards in Scotland? And if she is unable to do that today, will she tell us when that announcement will come? Thank you. Marie Todd to be followed by Rhoda Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First, I have to declare an interest. I'm a pharmacist registered with the General Pharmaceutical Council, and until my election in May, I was employed by NHS Highland. I'm really grateful to Liam MacArthur for the opportunity to speak in this debate. I represent the Highlands and Islands region, an area which covers nearly half the landmass of Scotland and is served by six different health boards. I want to take the opportunity, first of all, to acknowledge the aspects of today's motion, which I believe we can all agree on. Like Mr MacArthur, I believe that often island communities do require different solutions to the central belt. I would go further and suggest that many communities require their own solutions. It's clear that providing health and care services in remote communities requires a higher per capita investment. And I recognise that decisions about how these services are most effectively delivered are best made locally. Unfortunately, I can't in all conscience agree that the potential amalgamation of NHS boards would be to the detriment of the best possible health care in the islands. As a health professional, I was encouraged to ask regularly if the way that we had always done things was necessarily the best way. Innovation and change is vital to improving health care. We should always be looking for ways to improve the way that public services are provided. And whatever the financial constraints, our focus must be on patient outcomes and on quality of care. Governance and quality must not get lost during the reorganisation. Bigger health boards could be just as capable of reflecting the needs of a community as smaller ones. The key to success is for the individuals on the ground in the small local operating units to be empowered to deliver local solutions. I can absolutely understand that the people in the Northern Isles might be frightened that they'll lose their voice. And I can assure them that people all over the Highlands and Islands share the same concern. We know very well that a one-size approach doesn't fit all. In fact, NHS Highland is an example of a large health board area which covers remote and urban areas, island and mainland. And if you look at the example of health and social care integration, it operates different models to suit local needs. So they run a lead model agency in one part of Highland, in, 
a, a lead agency model in one part of Highland and an integrated joint board in our Gal and Butte model. If there's to be a change, it's vital that the engagement and consultation process enables us to make an informed decision. People must have the opportunity for discussion and a chance to identify any benefits as well as risks. Some things are already done well Scotland-wide. So NHS National Procurement uses combined buying power to get the best deal on buying drugs and the savings go right back into patient care. I have heard from people working in island health boards that it can be difficult for smaller health boards to compete with larger, better resourced ones to attract certain skilled staff. It is probably easier to conduct research and develop specialist knowledge and expertise in the large centres. Having fewer health board areas might just encourage the sharing of this precious resource, or at least remove some of the barriers for staff in remote areas to tap into that. There may also be a possibility of reducing duplication of effort all over the country. And I would pose the question, could having fewer health board areas reduce unnecessary variation in practice and outcomes? Might it actually improve the quality of care? False boundaries are an issue, and this proposed change could see them disappear. The most important question in this debate is how can we best deliver high quality care to communities? And we have to answer that question by looking at the evidence, consulting widely, and I hope that is exactly what the review will do. Rhoda Grant to be followed by John Finney. Can I congratulate Liam MacArthur um, for securing this debate? Um, while examining structures of health boards, we need to make sure that the structures are fit for purpose. Service delivery must be at the forefront of decision making. The structures then must be what delivers that best for the service. Our islands are unique. People who live and work on the mainland think that weather can be disruptive and they don't recognise the challenges that it places on island life. While island life is wonderful in many ways, you can't plan in the same way that you would in the mainland and that people take for granted here. It's normal to have plans disrupted because of weather, therefore providing services on an island must have at the heart of them the determination that systems will work in spite of weather. We don't expect lesser services, we simply, it's simply that we expect services to be delivered differently depending on local circumstances. Our island health boards are crucial with their knowledge and understanding of local conditions and are able to plan services to fit with their own unique local circumstances. That's not to say that they don't need support. Um, take, for instance, uh, the patient transport budget, which was rolled up into the Highlands and Islands Health Board settlement for this year. And I find this worrying because due to the size of island health board budgets, which are small, they don't have the same economies of scale to absorb these changes. And I believe that the funds transferred to meet those costs um, were not sufficient and cuts will have to be made. And these cuts must not have a detrimental effect on patients. However, as I speak to people about that, I'm staggered by the number of people who have been taken off island for routine checkups that they feel are unnecessary, it's disruptive to their lives, be because they, these checkups could have been carried out for them locally using video links. Therefore, island health boards and their patients need to be able to request and to receive consultations via telehealth. And I know that island health boards have the technology and expertise because it, they use it themselves inter-island. What's missing is that clinicians on the mainland appear to be reticent in embracing this technology. And this wouldn't be, therefore augur well if those health boards that won't embrace the technology were then put in charge of delivering services to islands. If they had the technology, it would provide better services. It would be patient-centred, and that's why the island health boards use it themselves, responding to local needs um, from people maybe not on the main, line, main island, but in other small islands that surround. If this health, these health boards who understand these challenges were to disappear, we would lose that knowledge and patients would be worth off, worse off. That's, but 
what we need from the larger health boards is a better understanding of the needs of remote and rural communities. Um, they need to fit telehealth facilities into their consulting rooms. And what we need from the government is better broadband in our rural and remote I and island communities so that they can access those services. But it's not just um, mainland health boards that have to change but also services like the Scottish Ambulance Service that operate a more model for urban areas that simply doesn't work in rural areas either as, either as an emergency service or as a patient transport system. We do need change, but the change must be of the mindset rather than of the structure. Therefore, presiding officer, we need to protect the local knowledge and support these health boards to deliver for their patients. John Finney, followed by Douglas Ross. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I too would like to lend my congratulations to Liam MacArthur for bringing this very important debate to us. And the motion talks about distinct communities, and, and my, my colleague Rhoda Grant talked about a mindset. And if you were to go and read the Scottish Government's urban rural classification, if you had nothing better to do, um, you'll see that there's various classifications, and they're all fixated around centres of population. Uh, Time-driven uh, drive over 30 minutes to a settlement of 10,000 or more uh, is, is one of them. Um, and that's very challenging because what we're talking about here is uh, communities that you might class as beyond very remote rural. They are uh, um, significantly uh, um, impeded by, by geography. But uh, the motion also goes on to talk about one size uh, not fitting all, and, and I would... I would agree with that, with, with some exceptions, and if uh, previous speakers have alluded to them, there are things like standard of care, there are things like terms and conditions of staff, um, and uh, they should be protected however administrative arrangements are configured. But there are challenges associated with that too, and uh, in the previous session I wrote to the Cabinet Secretary of Health about the challenges faced by the delivery of training to those involved in uh, social care um, from Orkney small islands. Um, now, of course, there's an assessment of needs, but there has to be a practical uh, approach to how that's delivered, which bears in mind quite literally time and tide. So these are best done locally. I have no doubt about that. Um, and island communities do require different solutions. Um, we have impact assessments that inform a lot of our decision making in this building here. But I have to say it is hard to change mindsets. And that's a two way thing. That's urban, rural, rural, urban. And I don't think there's necessarily a very clear understanding of what some of the practical implications are. And these solutions come from communities, so I would commend there's a new innovative model of care for the small islands um, um, in the Highland Health Board area. The, the Nuka model of health and care services created, managed and owned by the Alaskan native people. And that's seen a situation where the islands of egg and muck uh, um, come up with their own solutions to problems and it delivers jobs there. Um, now, um, inevitably requires additional resources. There's another phrase that's in the... Um, the motion, and that's very important because of clearly, as has been said, there are ac additional uh, travel and uh, other costs associated with travel. The cost of everything has the travel uh, added onto it. And an example where the one size fits all, the delivery of training, which moved from a situation when Ireland's Ireland's had the, the enterprise had the, the budget, which took consignments of actual cost. And when um, um, Skills Development Scotland take the role over, you move to a per capita head, well, that desperately impacts and, and some of the small providers and indeed uh, Argyle uh, training went out of business just last Friday there. So all decisions are best made locally and they're best made um, from an informed basis. A, a colleague mentioned NHS Highland. Um, I can stand at the north end of that and look over to Mr MacArthur's constituency in Orkney. I can stand at the southern end and look over to Glasgow. That's a ridiculous size, and that's certainly not the model we should be, be looking at. And it's certainly not the model I'm promoting, one that has an area the size of Belgium and Wales with Argyll and Butte added on. So, um, integration of health and social care has been a factor, uh, and I don't know if that's a, a factor that's prompted some of the proposals coming forward from the Scottish Government, but I would be su certainly suggesting, and my party would be su su suggesting more rather than less local management decisions. Now, the collaboration will continue, there's no doubt about that, and not every health board can and indeed could probably have every specialism, but as we've heard from Mr MacArthur, uh, the scanner in Orkney has made, made a difference there. Telehealth and the IT infrastructure that underpinned this is very important. NHS is a shared resource, it's a shared resource and it's a very valued public service. It's a resource that should be managed locally. And for the good folk of Orkney, 
That should be from within the islands by NHS Orkney. Thank you very much indeed. Douglas Ross to be followed by Tavi Scott. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Uh, I welcome the opportunity to contribute to today's debate and congratulate Liam MacArthur on securing parliamentary time for an important subject for Orkney uh, and indeed all our island health boards. Uh, as a member of the Highlands and Islands covering an area the same landmass as Belgium, uh, I know that a one-size-fits-all model will never work uh, for such diverse and distinctive communities. For me, it can never be the same healthcare provided in Kirkwall as it is in Keith, and I think Liam MacArthur alluded to that, and I was encouraged when he said a letter from the Cabinet Secretary for Health also accepted these distinctive uh, challenges in very different communities within the same Scottish parliamentary region. But the signs are that the SNP, despite having their fingers burnt with many other mergers, are moving on further with the centralisation of services. Uh, as my colleague Donald Cameron has already mentioned, anyone who followed the merger of the eight legacy police forces in Scotland to the National Police Scotland could not have failed to witness the havoc that merger caused. Jobs lost, staff morale at an all-time low, and despite crime figures falling, public confidence that communities are safer is also falling. And the Chief Constable stated recently that it will take a two to three year adjustment period to balance the force's finances. A point I put to the First Minister last week and she was, as usual, quite dismissive about it. But communities in Orkney and in Shetland and the Western Isles will have looked at that centralisation of services and be worried when a similar approach is being uh, proposed for their local health services. And I do worry when I listen to, to Marie Todd uh, as a backbench SNP MSP not recognising the failures of these, I will give way in a second if, if she'd like to come in, but the failure of these mergers and just assuming that they won't, these similar problems won't happen if you merge and uh, make bigger the health boards for the islands. I'll give way. I can, I can allow you the time back, Mr Thank Ross. Marie Todd. Thank you for allowing me to come back. Will the member acknowledge that people in his own area where he lives in the constituency of Murray have raised with him and with me the concern about boundaries, um, false boundaries caused by the health board area. So people living in the area of Murray who live, may live closer to Ragmore Hospital than to ARI are forced because of the health board area of NHS Grampian to travel to ARI. And will the member at least acknowledge that it is worth looking at this as a potential solution to some of those boundary issues? Douglas Ross. Uh, I thank Marie Todd for that intervention. I'm, I'm not really sure she's you know, made the point very well for her own argument. What the people in Murray are saying to me is that uh, living in between Aberdeen and Inverness, they feel they don't get as good a service from the NHS as people closer to these communities. It doesn't mean just because you live there that you should have to put up with services being lost. And I think what we should be looking at is delivering services locally, which is exactly what we're discussing in the debate today, not merging it into far bigger functions and then places like Murray get lost and forgotten about. And that is a serious concern in our area. But NHS NHS Orkney serves a population of approximately 21,500 people and the challenges for that health board are well known. The 620 staff employed by NHS Orkney do a fantastic job and Scottish Conservatives commend them for the role they play across the Orkney Islands. I know when presenting the NHS Orkney Annual Review, which Liam MacArthur mentioned earlier this week, Cathy Cowan took the opportunity to acknowledge the efforts made in Orkney, in particular on the Isles, to help recruit and retain staff. They are a key asset and they will be troubled, I think by some of the uh, proposals coming forward from the Scottish Government. Now, I'm hoping to meet with the Chief Executive, Cathy Cowan, soon, and I previously met with the Chairman of the Board, Ian Kinneborough, and I know how passionate they are about delivering the best possible care to local people as locally as possible, and that's why it's difficult to hear some of the examples given about people having to go as far as Dundee to get vital treatment. Now, I've always found that the best decisions are made locally and with the full involvement of those affected. And while there is no firm proposals on the table, it is clear that the statement made by this minority, and I you know, focus on that, this minority Scottish Government is they will examine the number, the structure and the regulation of health boards. As a Scottish Conservative MSP for the Highlands and Islands, I would urge the Scottish Government to consult fully on their plans. It's worrying that the RCN noted in their brief for this debate that there has been little or no engagement on the Government's stated intention. The briefing continues by suggesting this could lead to a perception that change is being introduced by stealth by a government talking behind closed doors. That cannot be allowed. I welcome today's debate, which allows us the opportunity to, be, to debate openly in Parliament, and I will be listening carefully and with great interest to the Scottish Government's response to the points made. Thank you. The last of the open speeches is Tavish Scott.
Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I begin by, uh, with other colleagues, thanking Liam MacArthur for bringing this debate uh, to Parliament this afternoon, uh, but also to concentrate, uh, I want to just briefly concentrate on the uh, care that uh, medical staff bring to the islands, uh, and in particular to say thank you to the Gilbert Bain staff and indeed across the NHS for the care they brought to my father recently. The, uh, we sometimes take these things for granted, but the professionalism of our staff um, is, I think, worthy of mention in a debate which in some ways is around process and, and structure. I think it would be helpful for the Minister today to be very clear with Parliament about what is going on. In today's Press and Journal, uh, the Cabinet Secretary is quoted as saying that the objective of the Government is to uh, reduce bureaucracy and remove barriers to effective patient care. That's in today's Press and Journal. I do hope that the Minister, in winding up today's debate, can say exactly what these bureaucratic bits are and what are those barriers, because certainly in asking uh, my uh, health service in Shetland uh, to detail that, it would be interesting to, to compare the notes that the Minister Minister has clearly that illustrate why that need is so uh, great. Of course, to reduce patient um, barriers and to reduce bureau bureaucracy is the right thing to do. But let us have, instead of just the language of this, some concrete examples from the Minister uh, today which illustrate why this government's taking this matter forward. And I also hope in the wind-up, as other members have said today, that she will uh, commit to bringing forward the proposals the government have to Parliament. Uh, it is known that this can be done by uh, simply ministerial direction, uh, by which I mean the, uh, any changes to the structure of health boards and to the geographic coverage of our geographical health boards. Instead, I hope the Minister today will confirm that if the government do conclude they plan to bring forward um, proposals to Parliament, that will be done through primary legislation. So there is full and proper scrutiny and consultation, as, as uh, other, other members have mentioned, of any proposals in this uh, area. I want to just make uh, a couple of points points on the general uh, issues that have been raised very uh, well by members from across the Parliament this afternoon. And the first one is on health and care joint integration. As Audit Scotland uh, have made very, very clear, this is, to put it mildly, challenging. It's a challenging right across Scotland, but it's certainly challenging, as, um, as, uh, as, uh, as uh, Mr Ross was mentioning, in the context of areas where there aren't coterminous boundaries. It therefore seems just beyond belief to me that anyone would propose uh, merging the islands, whether they be the Western Isles or the Northern Isles, with mainland health boards and therefore making that integrated joint board situation even more challenging. And therefore I hope uh, on that argument alone uh, the Minister would recognise the importance of maintaining the geographic uh, consistency of what is being worked on. That's not to say that, these propose that what is now happening in terms of merging social care and health uh, isn't difficult. It certainly is. Uh, and that is is best illustrated by last week's Shetland Times where the uh, Joint Integration Board in Shetland decided not to close a ward in a Gilbert Bain hospital in Lerwick, not least of which because of the argument put forward by one of the members, I may say one of the councillor members, who pointed out that the intermediate care teams needed to uh, deliver the care that would happen were that ward to close uh, wasn't yet there in, in terms of one care team as opposed to the four that would be needed. Now that's an example, I think, of the important point here of the uh, accountability of our local health services to sensible arguments about the geography that we all face. And those seem to me, that seems to me the, the principal argument around not making a change in this area. The second one is that where there's structural reform, as we have seen time and time again in Scotland, the management tier, through no fault of their own, then concentrate not on, in this case, patient care, but on their own jobs and the future of their organisation. That will assuredly happen. Uh, and you look no, no further than Police Scotland uh, for the way in which chief constables across Scotland had to deal with their own staff and the consequences of, of that change. And I hope the government do at least recognise that point and will be prepared. Uh, to respond to it. And finally, Deputy Presiding Officer, uh, the essential point here in terms of designing uh, care and designing health in uh, local areas uh, is around the expertise of those uh, who are involved in that service. Uh, I, su I suggest that our recruitment challenges, not just I know in Orkney or Shetland, but also right across the Highlands and Islands, as many have reflected in recent days, uh, David Alston, no, no least David Alston in terms of the uh, Highland Health Board, said the one thing that doesn't help us recruit uh, is if there's another whole tier of structural reform. There seem to be some very good arguments for not taking this forward. I hope the Minister's listening. I now call on Maureen Watt to close this debate. Uh, around seven minutes, please, Minister. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. And can I welcome uh, Liam MacArthur's motion and the opportunity uh, to discuss the points raised in it.
This government has placed the needs and aspirations of our island communities at the very centre of our agenda and will continue to do so. And I welcome the opportunity how to talk about how we are delivering on that commitment. The review of health board structures, functions and relationships with local authorities hasn't yet begun. However, I can reassure members that the final proposals will ensure that the unique needs of our islands are reflected. The Parliament has not yet got a timetable for this legislation. Cabinet is still in discussion on the initial papers and this legislation will be brought forward in the normal way and of course will go out to consultation with all those who wish to be involved in it. But we have a commitment to locally delivered services where possible and we know that healthcare services of our islands are experienced in serving the unique needs of their populations. Delivery of those excellent services is something the staff of these islands should be rightly proud of. And as Rhoda Grant and others said, health career professionals know their populations and their needs, and that is precisely the direction of travel. NHS Orkney and Shetland are both developing new models of care, so services can be delivered locally where previously patients had to travel to the mainland. For example, NHS Shetland have successfully worked with the Golden Jubilee to provide a shared pathway for patients undergoing joint replacement in Glasgow. This means that much of the pre-assessment and post-operative follow-up for these patients is provided in Shetland by local physiotherapists and nursing staff using telehealth techniques. And I take on board the point that Rhoda Grant made that telehealth is sometimes restricted by the uh, broadband services uh, that are available. And that's why we need to continue with the work that we are doing through Digital Scotland with upgrading the, bo the broadband. But in terms of NHS Shetland, the board are, always, are also now working with NHS Grampian to use that uh, approach with, uh, that is uh, through the Golden Jubilee uh, in other parts of the orthopaedic path pathway. NHS Orkney are also increasing locally delivered services, including enhanced chemotherapy and gynaecology. Um, Liam, MacArthur, Liam MacArthur mentioned the funding for the CT scanner, 200,000, that has enabled the board to uh, um, acquire the, the scanner and enabling the provision of 800 scans in Orkney, where previously patients had to travel to the mainland. This is local delivery where it wasn't before. John Finney. Uh, thank you. I'm grateful for the Minister accepting intervention. Would the Minister accept that there always has been that uh, cross-border collaboration about specialist treatment? That doesn't require any alteration to the administrative structures that should be local. Yeah. Yes, I accept that. And as somebody from uh, NHS Grampian, I know about the clan services. Uh, I've worked with uh, people locally in, in delivering that and recognise the huge contribution made by the islands uh, to the services um, at uh, Aberdeen Royal Infirmary. But local de delivery of such services is only possible with the workforce to support it. And we recognise the challenges of recruiting staff in these unique areas. And we also know that island boards are leading the way in designing models of care that maximise the contribution of the whole care healthcare team. And what I was saying uh, before John Finney uh, uh, intervened was that there is more that we can deliver locally, not less, and that is the direction of travel. Um, in in uh, Shetland, the largest D GP practice has improved access to the healthcare centre by successfully introducing advanced practice skill mix to their primary care team, which now includes GPs, advanced nurse practitioners, practice nurses, nurses and a pharmacist. It's not simply within the health service that we seek to work more effectively for patients. Through health and social care integration, we have continued to build on the island's long history of joint working across the public sector. It's empowered local communities in the islands to develop and shape their health and social care services. It also allows them to take control of how best to use resources based on their detailed understanding of the needs of their populations. Local people are developing local solutions. That's community empowerment. That's devolution to local uh, communities, not the centralization that Liam MacArthur and Donald Cameron try to assert. Yeah. 
Liam McCarthy. To Maureen Watt for taking an intervention. I, I really couldn't disagree with any of what uh, she said, but as John Finney just um, illustrated, this has been going on for some time. I think that the, the, the islands have, have demonstrated their willi willingness to work collaboratively within the islands and between the islands and larger health boards. The concern is a merger of island health boards into a larger health board area dilutes the voice of that health board, which at the moment can stand alone and make its representations as it sees fit. Maureen Watt. And because there are no firm proposals yet on the table, Liam MacArthur is just surmising that that's what's going to happen. As I think the Cabinet Secretary said in reply to both uh, Liam and Tavish, what we want to do is reduce unnecessary backroom, backroom duplication and remove structural impediments to better care, given that we now have uh, integrated joint boards. Do we still need um, to have the, the health boards as well, or do we need a, system, a structure uh, that reflects the change um, that uh, has taken place? Um, we have, we are supporting improvements through substantial financial investment across Orkney and Shetland. Resource budgets have increased by 15.5% in real terms between 2010-11 and 2016-17. Both boards uplist for this financial year include 1 million for social care as part of the health and social care integration agenda. And we're making significant infrastructure investments, including more than 60 million in the new state-of-the-art Barfor Hospital. And this will again support a range of first-class primary care, emergency and elective diagnostic outpatients, day case and inpatient services, all trying to reduce the amount of time uh, that folk need to travel to the mainland. And in terms of what Douglas Ross said, as a Keith Quine, I would expect the patients in Keith and Kirkwall to get the same high standard of care, however it might be delivered differently. And someone made the point about artificial boundaries, and that's exactly the situation that people in Murray find themselves. They may want to go to Inverness rather than uh, Ragmore. If it can be delivered at Dr. Gray's, then all the better. So we have got to remove the artificial boundaries that currently exist. Um, the commitments, I think, have been seen by this government with the appointment of the island's minister, who is here with me today. And everything that we will do in the future has, I think, be, we have said that we will island proof. So in conclusion, I think it's right and proper for this government to review the existing structures to support improvements in patient care. We will continue to identify specific solutions for our island communities to help them to continue to flourish and prosper in the years ahead, not just for the benefit of Orkney, Shetland and the Western Isles, but for all of Scotland's 93 island communities. Thank you, Presiding Officer. That concludes this debate, and I now suspend this meeting until 2.30 p.m. <laughs>